Hallelujah. We are still dealing with being begotten. Last week I said God has been teaching me about love. So if I was in Crete last week, I ought to believe that I have approached free nursery. Hallelujah. And in this season that God is rebuilding the ancient ruins of our families, it's impressed in my heart that God also wants to rebuild the ancient ruins of lovelessness in the body of Christ. So say this to yourself, I am begotten of love. I am a being of love. God wants to love people through me. Do you know you are a vessel of love? You have been begotten by the God who is love so that you can manifest, you can channel, you can be a vessel of love. Let's go to the 13th chapter of the book of John, verse 34. John chapter 13, verse 34. Please, let's read it together. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. A new commandment I give to you. Who is the you or who was the you Jesus was addressing here? Not the Pharisees, not the Sadducees, and definitely not the world. Just as in the time when these words were first spoken, Till now, the commandment, this commandment is given, is addressed to you and I, the followers of Jesus. Those who are God begotten. Those who are not, been, who are not begotten by the will of man. They are not man begotten, they are not flesh begotten, they are not blood begotten. They are not world begotten. You, this commandment I give to you. You who has been begotten by me, who is love that you do what? Love one another. You love differently. Love is not a natural phenomenon. You know, it's like prayer. Prayer is not something the natural man can do. So it's not something you can do naturally. That is why the commandment is not, a, this commandment is not addressed to the world. It's not addressed to men who are not in Christ. It's addressed to the God begotten. For God is love and only those who have been begotten by him and partake of his divine nature can truly love. Now this is what we looked at last week, if I may quickly recap, because this is building upon last week. We said last week that we are begotten of the God who is love to manifest love. That makes us representatives, ambassadors of the love of God on earth. So we are called to love because God loves us. We also highlighted last week that the love spoken about here is two things. One, death. Death to self. As you die to wanting your own way. Death to lust. You die to wanting everything for yourself. Death to pride. You die to wanting to appear important. And two, this love is wisdom. This love is governed by wisdom. This is what we said last week. That wisdom tells us, for instance, how to love our neighbor and how to love our enemy. Both of which we've been commanded to love. So it's not because God says love. You love your enemy the way you would have loved yourself and love your neighbor. There's wisdom. And so this love, this is what we talked about last week. Today, Jesus is giving us a, different, a, a standard for measuring our love one to another. He's saying, love each other as much as I have loved you. So we are not just called to love. We are called to love just as Jesus has loved us. Now, that's a, a weighty one. Because when you understand that his love took him to the cross, and we know that he laid down his life for us, then you know that he's literally telling us that we should love so much that should it come, that our very life is needed. You can complete it. We should be ready to lay it down. It's been a sobering week for me because it's like you're coming face to face with what is required, what we have capability for, what we have capacity for, but we've never really put demand on ourselves because it will involve our dying. 
our dying to our pride, dying to the need to be important, to be right. So when we say, when, when we look at the Bible and the Bible says, God is love. Love is the way of God. We know that. It, it, when, so when the Bible says God is love, it's followed up with an explanation of what God did. We said last week, love is an action word. So the Bible says God is love. And how do we know his love? He sent his only begotten son that you and I may live through him. So when we now say that we are God begotten, we are beings of love, we are vessels of love, we have to be ready to follow up that declaration with our actions. For Jesus laid down his life for us, so we ought to also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. So when we look at the life of Jesus, we see the love of, of the Father. Daily, men look to our actions to see the love of Jesus. So when men look at us, act, when men listen to us speak, what they want to hear, what they want to see is the love of Jesus. That is how our lives will point men back to Christ. For it is said that our love cannot be in words, it cannot be in speech, it has to be in deed. Why? We have been begotten of love. The very nature you now have as a born again Christian is a nature of love. You have capacity to love, not as the world knows, but as God knows. And that means, if that love demands death, you have capacity. I have capacity to lay down our, we have capacity to lay down our lives. This week, God has been talking about rebuilding ancient ruins. In the body of Christ, there's an ancient, a monstrous ancient ruin of lovelessness. We still struggle with basic things. Jesus was willing to lay down his very life. Some of us are not even willing to lay down part of our material possessions for the sake of our brothers. God is love and we are the God begotten. Our outward actions must reflect the inward reality of our relationship with God. So we are the revelation of the love of God in our different spheres, in that marriage, in that home, in that school, in that neighborhood. You are a reflection, a revelation of the love of God. It is through love that you and I are supposed to live and function and have our identity. Now I noted a couple of things that I just want to run through because this, 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 I said this has been God literally teaching me. Earlier this week, had to lead me to go and apologize to somebody. I died a million times. But then after I did that, I walked away with so much joy. And I was happy I did it. Living, you know, sometimes you don't apologize because you are wrong. Or because you value the relationship. Or because God has told you your words has been interpreted by the other person as you know in this case the Holy Spirit had to tell me this person was not hearing the issue this person was hearing his identity so you go and correct it because you were dealing with an issue but he walked away calling himself the names of the issue so he became the identity of the issue so go and correct it and give him the identity that I've made you see in him so I had to go and call out the gold in him and tell him clearly what I talked about had to do with an issue. It should, you should never hear it as your identity. And I, I saw tears in his eyes. So I walked away like, Lord, thank you that I obeyed. God is going to be placing demands on, her, on us as you go out. I said last week, sometimes he will send you to go and apologize to your house girl who broke your beautiful job and burnt up your carpet and broke your television and it's wrong on every side but you did not speak with love you did not correct with love because he is interested in endowing us with power but we cannot carry power with lovelessness we have to manifest love because we be begotten by love so I said I made a couple of notes as it came to me this week because it's, it's literally been a lesson so I'm learning as I'm sharing. Say so living in God is living in love. We cannot say we love God if we, we don't love people. For when we say we in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our beings, we are his offspring. What we are essentially saying is that in love we live, in love we move, and in love we have our beings. So it is through love. 
that we are supposed to live and function and have our identity. If that is not what we are doing, then that's the standard God is pushing us to. Because we have capacity for us. The second thing that came to me and I noted to share today is, as the church of Jesus Christ, we cannot take love lessons from the world. We are partakers of the divine nature. Our citizenship is in Zion. The culture of this earth cannot define us. We cannot afford to take love lessons, to, to ask to let the world show us how to love. Our lives must point men to our nativity. For love is a culture, love is a custom, love is a tradition, love is a language, love is a system of operations in our homeland. Love, not as we know it, but love as God knows it. A sacrificial and selfless love. We see Jesus Christ going against popular opinion and tribalistic prejudice. He reached out to the Samaritan woman and loved her out of immorality into the kingdom. From that simple encounter, a mighty evangelist was unleashed. The church... If we are to take the world for God, if we are to take territories, we are to take our neighborhoods, if we are to take our, our homes, if we are to take our families, we are going to do it on the basis of love. We're going to see through tribalism. We're going to see through whatever it is we feel is holding us back. We have to see through the many mountains that we have kept between us and the people that we were here to turn to make disciples of. The command is was and will still be go and make disciples of all nations. The way to it is love. Not as the world says it. Not as the world knows it. Not as the world says cancel culture. Not as any of those things that are just coming up and the church is jumping on the train because it is trendy. But as God knows it. Three, our desire to love must be greater than our desire to be right. Our righteousness should not chase people away from God. The holiness of Jesus drew us. You and I came to the Father because of the holiness of Jesus. Our holiness must not, must not chase men away from the Father. It must draw men to the Father. Because if we are truly God begotten, if you are truly born again, then it is Christ living in you and reconciling the world back to the Father. So if your holiness, if my holiness is drawing people, is, is chasing people away from church, if, if our holiness is chasing people away from God, then it's not the holiness Jesus has. We have to find out where our, that nat where our nativity is because that's not from Zion. There is four. There is no substitute to loving and praying for your enemies. Ah. There is no substitute to loving your enemies and praying for them. Do you know why? In loving your enemies, in praying for your enemies, you, pr you protect yourself from descending into the dark pit of hate, of anger, of bitterness, of pain. You literally take the high road. I saw this play out this week, Lord have mercy. Just praying for somebody so much that instead of going the other way of hate, sorry, I had to keep saying it was fast, fast, fast. Something was bothering me. But instead of going the other way of hate, of pain, like, what? I just, I went into prayer and woke up with joy. And I discovered there is no substitute. If you, if I say something and betray you tomorrow, what you owe me is prayer. What you owe me is love. If your neighbor, your husband, your children, your classmate offends you tomorrow, what you owe that person is love. What you owe that person is prayer. The more you keep repeating what I said, what I did not do, what I did, what you felt I did not say, the more you hurt yourself, the more you descend into the darkness of hate, of anger, of bitterness, of all those, you just come down. But by the time you take prayer and love, you, you hate on the high road. There's a highway that exists in God. You walk there in love. So this week, take out time. Go and search your heart. The people that have hurt you, the people that have betrayed you, the people that have, that have treated you like you don't matter, the people that you did everything for, and then by the time they were presenting what happened between the two of you, is a different version entirely. You can't even recognize that version because it did not happen. Pray for them. Pray until the heart leaves your heart. Pray until the hate. If it, does, if it takes three months, keep praying. I have seen
feeling it so I know what I'm talking about. When it leaves your heart, God will lead you to something. The joy you will feel. You will, and then sometimes he will even give you words to relate back with that person. And you, the person receives the words and is wondering, did you not hear what I said? I thought you heard it. It's the greatest and the most powerful way of being a witness. Love. We are rebuilding ancient ruins. God is rebuilding the ancient ruin of lovelessness in his body. So love keeps you silent in the face of a painful betrayal. Jesus left an example here for us. Judas walked side by side with Jesus for three years. Jesus invested in Judas, loved Judas, cared for Judas. And yet for just 30 pieces of silver, the guy sold him out. Being fully human, I'm sure he must have hurt, he was discouraged, he felt pain. I'm very sure he cried. But in the midst of all of that betrayal, what did he do? He loved on. So can we, because we are begotten in his nature. You can love that person you have sworn to never forgive. Last week I said the love is commitment to that person's happiness, security and well-being. So you are, you are under obligation as the God begotten to not hurt that person, to not do anything that, to not say, to not even try to defend yourself. That's been the most incredible one that I've learned personally. Don't try to, to sound right. Just let it be. So love keeps you quiet when you don't know the whole story. Or when what you know is true but ugly. This season... God is rebuilding the ruins of lovelessness in the body of Christ. He's calling us back to love. Love is the reason God sent his son. Love is the reason God's son died. Love can be the reason we spare the next person. Love can be the reason we hold our tongue. Love can be the reason we let that story end with us. Love can be the reason we refuse to forward that bad video. Love can be the reason we refrain from embellishing or editing the truth to suit us. If Jesus loved in the middle of betrayal, we can because we have his nature. Love is the way of God. Love is how God works. Until you and I walk in love, we will not gain a deeper un understanding and knowledge of God. For everyone who, is, who loves is fathered by God and knows God. So this morning I pray that God will show us the way of love. May we be a people that love much and judge less. May we be a church that is restored to love. May we be a people that remember that we carry these treasures in earthen vessels. So we are subject to frailty. I can make mistake. Your pastor can make mistake. Anybody can make mistake. May we be a people that are committed to the joy, the happiness, the well-being, the security of everyone around us. And may we be, may love find full expression, not just here in Grace Family, but generally in the body of Christ. Please rise with me and let's say these words together. I want you to take the words home. You can print it out and post it somewhere. Let it be like what a clarion call when you see it. Even if it's just one line, you're able to take and run monthly, weekly, daily. Run with these words. Say with me, I am a vessel of God's love. Say it because the words are being begotten in you. I have prayed for you that as, you, as you're hearing me, the words you are hearing are like flaming arrows filled with the fire of God's love. So I expect love to be awakened in our heart. I prayed for on the seat that as you sit, as you go back home, you'll be enveloped in the fire of God's love that you will love effortlessly. So when you are, ex you are declaring, declare it knowing that it is, it is, there is grace for you to become it. I am a vessel of God's love. My heart is instructed by the Lord. My hands are stretched out by his love. My lips are opened by his wisdom. And my feet are ordered by his word. I am begotten by love to love. I am a vessel of God's love in my sphere. I am a safe place of shelter to those around me. God pours his love and mercy through me to my world. My life is shaped by God. I see things from his perspective. 
I intentionally make allowance for another person's fault. I am begotten of love to manifest love. I am an echo of God's forgiving and fervent love towards others. The love of God flows through my words. The love of God flows through my actions. I am relevant to the agenda of God on earth. I am chosen by God for this new life of love. I am alert to what is going on around Christ. I am roped with the virtues of God. I am merciful as I endeavor to understand others. I am compassionate and show kindness to all. I am gentle, humble, humble, and graceful. I abandon every, every display of selfishness. I commit to seeking the best for others. I am unoffendable in my patience with others. I tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith. I forgive quickly and completely as Christ forgives me. Today and always, I put on love as my basic all-purpose garment. I am comfortable with seeing others blessed and prosperous. Amen. Open your mouth and thank God for begetting you in love. Open your mouth and bless God for begetting you in love. Say thank you, Father, for begetting me in love. Thank you for making me a partaker of your divine nature. Thank you for begetting me in love. This life will honor you. This life will glorify you. This life will manifest you. This life will extol you. Awaken love in me, Lord. Activate love in me Lord help me to see as you see help me to love as you love help me to speak as you speak help me to hold my tongue Lord awaken love in me let the world see love in me let the world experience love in me in the name of Jesus